Okay, so we're finally talking about Vince Dunn. It took a while, but here we are. Vince Dunn is the number one, I guess, publicly available asset on the trading block right now. I guess you could probably say that. What we're talking about here is St. Louis Blues defenseman Vince Dunn, and a whole bunch of teams are selected by the lovely people over at the score that might need the services of this guy. We're also going to be talking about one other team that apparently was in legitimate conversation with the Blues about this player, but who eventually did not pull the trigger, which led to the GM maybe resigning? Who knows? But... Our topic today is Vince Dunn, a 24-year-old, 6 feet tall, 203-pound defenseman, a guy who was drafted by the St. Louis Blues all the way back in 2015 in the second round. His current contract situation sees him making $1.875 million until the end of this season, where his contract expires and he will be an RFA. However, he is indeed probably the most publicly available guy who is on the market right now, and I say that not really super sincerely, mostly because we had Frank Cervelli on TSN who was told that the Blues have engaged with other teams in conversations about trading Vince Dunn on an episode of Insider Trading the other week. Now, Vince Dunn is a guy who is mostly defined by his offensive capabilities on the blue line. He had 35 points in 78 games played two years ago, 23 points in 71 games last year. He was half a point a game when the St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup in 2019. And this year, he's at three points in eight games played. He's a minus two. That's not amazing, but hey, it's a pretty good stat line. Here's a report from the score talking about when it was revealed Dunn was actually put on the trading block. He played poorly in Sunday's loss, this is about a week ago, so last week Sunday, lost to the LA Kings as Carl Grundstrom burned Dunn for a goal that Blues head coach Craig Berube lamented post-game. Gotta play better. You can't get walked one-on-one. -on -one. We'll keep that in-house talking about it. The Blues made Dunn a healthy scratch Tuesday against the Vegas Golden Knights, and he, in the process of being out, has been in the conversation of trades, which is why we have this article over here. Take a look at this. It's five teams that should trade for Vince Dunn, written by Josh Wegman here on The Score. The first team is the Ottawa Senators, and you know what? I get it. I definitely get it. Vince Dunn, again, 24 years old, he's got a lot of room to grow in a very capable NHL defender. He just kind of needs to work on the defensive side of his game. He's got some offensive flashy tools that could help him quarterback a power play, but when it comes to the way he plays back checking in his own zone, yeah, there's some room to work with there, but if you're an Ottawa Senators team that's kind of desperate just to try out anything, I mean, if you guys were willing to get out Eric and Branson over there, might as well try a Vince Dunn too, eh? It's just, this kind of an asset is probably going to be a little bit more expensive than an Eric and Branson was because of the value he has. However, you could debate, St. Louis is in a position where they're not going to use Vince Dunn anyway, so who knows what the price tag is really going to be. The Ottawa Senators could use some help long term on the blue line, they have Thomas Shabbat over here, they have some good prospects. Jake Sanderson was taken in the draft. They also have Lassie Thompson. They have Jacob Bernard Docker. They have, obviously, Eric Bronstrom, too. But they do have an ability to maybe even open up another spot here because you can never have too many good defenders. The Senators don't really have too many good defenders right now. But if there is a market here for a Vince Dunn, I would not be surprised if the Ottawa Senators are going to go out there and maybe even try to do something. Of course, it's just a suggestion, but that makes a lot of sense to me. Next up in this article, it's the Detroit Red Wings. They say a similar sentiment about their team than the Ottawa Senators. And while I probably would agree, like John Merrill, Troy Stetcher, Mark Stahl, yeah, this isn't a great blue line. As much as I love Troy Stetcher, it's not amazing having him as one of your top guys on your blue line. But if a Vince Dunn is on the market, I would not be surprised if Steve Eiserman went out there and at least tried to have a conversation about it. Because the long-term projection of the Detroit Blue Line includes guys, firstly, like Moritz Sider. You have Antti Tuomiso over there. You have Albert Johansson and Philip Hronik. There are some very interesting names here, and you can certainly add more, but the heyday for this core is going to be down the line. It's not now. Vince Dunn, being 24 years old, helps contribute towards that future, but he also could help now, too. So it really depends on your perspective on that front. Next up on this article is the LA Kings. The article talks about how the Kings' blue line is better than Ottawa's and Detroit's, but it's lopsided, because Drew Doughty, Sean Walker, and Matt Roy all make up on the right side, but that left side featuring Mata, Mikey Anderson, and Curtis McDermott is much weaker. The fact that Dunn is a left-sided guy is the biggest argument over here as to why it would work. 
And quite frankly, that does make a lot of sense to me when you put it like that. Obviously, we don't know if it's going to be for sure, but they are trying to remain a little bit more competitive than the Red Wings and the Senators are at the moment. So I think there is a bigger incentive here with the idea of a Vince Dunn because of how he could help out your team today. It's just, who knows what's going to go on with Tobias Bjornfot down the line. The Kings do have some good prospects on D, not amazing like they do up on forward with Arthur Kaliev, Gabe Velarde, Alex Turcotte, but... Their deep prospects on the right side especially are very nice. Brock Faber, Jordan Spence, you can go on. So for the left side, maybe a Vince Dunn is what you need to capitalize on what is a right-handed defenseman in Drew Doughty who is already probably on the latter half of his heyday in terms of his overall career, but still has a lot more years left in the tank. If he's getting mentorship from a guy like Doughty, I think that's pretty good. Now, the next team in this article might actually kind of shock you a little bit. It's the New York Rangers, who have a much better blue line than all the other teams that we've discussed so far. But it's also the same dilemma that this article brings up. The fact that the right side, it's stacked. It's Truba. It's Fox. It's D'Angelo. Yeah, not anymore, bud. Sorry, this article's a few days old. Not D'Angelo anymore. Keandre Miller is over here, and you still have Ryan Lindgren, but... Then the article goes over how Jack Johnson is in this lineup, and yeah, if it's Jack Johnson in there... You could certainly debate that Vince Dunn is an upgrade. Sure, defensively, you could make the argument that there isn't really an improvement there, but at the end of the day, Vince Dunn has a whole bunch more growing to do. Jack Johnson doesn't. At least, I don't think so. And who knows, maybe because Tony D'Angelo is now on waivers, or he was on waivers yesterday, who knows if there's another spot on the Rangers' decor that might actually be opened up and maybe allow them to explore the possibility of a Dunn trade. Again, though, if you're a fan of any of these teams, feel free to comment down in the comments below what you think about Vince Dunn and whether or not your team would benefit from acquiring this kind of player. Whether or not the price would be right, you know, because that's definitely a big part of it. And some teams definitely have a lot more expendable assets in the now to burn than others. So if you're a fan of the Rangers, the Red Wings, the Kings, the Senators, etc., then please let me know in the comments. The final team here on the article, which is not the last team we're talking about here, but it is mentioned in this piece, the Winnipeg Jets. And this one's a lot more easy to understand. They were we're always kind of in need for a big-time defenseman who can actually produce a whole bunch of points. The article cites an improvement over guys like Nathan Beaulieu, Derek Forbert, and Sammy Nikiu as the reason as to why they would do this, but the article does discuss that if you get Vince Dunn as the Winnipeg Jets, you're giving yourself some problems with the expansion draft because you're going to have to protect one of Dunn or Dylan DeMello, assuming that Morrissey or Pionk are already protected. Also, the quarantine rules when you acquire a guy, he has to come over the border. And Pierre-Luc Dubois is exhibiting that kind of problem right now. So who knows if the Jets would actually even be interested in repeating that whole process again. But the last team we have over here is one that actually might have already been involved in a Vince Dunn trade. It's actually the Pittsburgh Penguins. This isn't on the score article over here. This is a different source. Let's take a look at this piece right here. The Pittsburgh Penguins were reportedly close on Vince Dunn before Jim Rutherford's resignation. Let's take a look at the quote on PittsburghHockeyNow.com. As details trickle out regarding Jim Rutherford's resignation as Pittsburgh Penguins GM on Wednesday, multiple sources told the NHL Hockey Now system that Rutherford was close to a Penguins trade before he turned in his keys and left the organization. Sources close to the process on both the Penguins side and the St. Louis Blues side each told Hockey Now that Rutherford was circling on St. Louis Blues D-man Vince Dunn, both sides said the Penguins were close. The return is not known at the moment, but that is the idea that we have here. So. If you remember, we made a video talking about how apparently there was a trade that Rutherford was going to pull off, that the management might have told him, no, bud, you can't do that, which eventually led to him resigning. That trade idea was, at the very beginning, a Chris Letang trade, but later on it was Rob Rossi, a few hours actually after that rumor was leaked, saying that it wasn't true, and that there was a trade, but it wasn't for Letang specifically. Who knows if it was done that was out there on the Penn's radar? Now, I would not be surprised if Vince Dunn was merely seen as a target here by the Penguins because we've noted this before. The Penguins don't really have too many good prospects. They don't really have a nice youthful core going into the next few years. So any guy who's below the age of 25, I think the Penguins could look at and see as a potential target here. It's just really interesting hearing about how maybe the management came in and said no to any ideas that Rutherford had towards making a trade. And of course, there's no 100% certainty saying that Dunn was indeed involved in the trades. It's just what the rumor mill says. So who really knows if that actually happened? But I'd be willing to kind of give a little bit of a spotlight here to the folks over at Hockey Now who do have some nice insider information to share, which is what we're looking at here. So tell me in the comments what you think about any of these teams. If you're a fan of any of these teams, what would you give up if a Vince Dunn was out there on the trade block, which he is? 
But if you wouldn't give up anything, hey, just let me know in the comments. Do you actually think this guy would be a good, valuable pickup for your team? Whether you're a fan of Detroit, Ottawa, LA, New York, Winnipeg, or Pittsburgh, please let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.